So here's some data that I took using exactly the method I showed you in the previous video. So these are my experimental values for the time of flight and the horizontal range traveled by the cart, and these are my theoretical values. And I just want to draw your attention to the two ranges. So my experimental value, measured with the tape measure, was about 29.2 centimeters. My theoretical range, calculated, was 38.4 centimeters. Wow, that's 9 centimeters difference, and the uncertainties only add up to about 1 centimeter. That's a really big discrepancy, and it's definitely not accounted for by the size of the uncertainties. So we know something's gone very wrong here. Now this will happen even in experiments that don't have a gotcha built into them. You'll do everything right, the experiment was well designed, the theory is valid, and yet still, your results won't end up agreeing with an uncertainty. So what do you do in those cases? Well, in this course, what you would do when you find that your values don't agree with an uncertainty is you should try and figure out why. And one of the most fruitful things to think about is the assumptions and approximations that you made in that experiment. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, I have no idea what you're talking about. How am I supposed to figure this out? It's okay. For this experiment, I'm actually going to walk you through all of the assumptions and approximations that we made, and then I'll leave it up to you to figure out which one was affecting things and then to adjust your experiment, get new data, and hopefully get better agreement. So let's think about the assumptions and approximations that we used in this experiment. Well, the first one is we're sending a cart through the air. We assumed that there was no air resistance. So might that have caused this big a discrepancy? Well, nine centimeters, probably not. Air resistance might change your value by a couple of millimeters. It wouldn't change it by a couple of centimeters. So that's one assumption or approximation that probably did not cause this. It's got to be something else. So what might it be? Well, we took four measurements in this experiment. The height that the cart fell, the horizontal distance that it traveled, the initial velocity of the cart when it left the table, and the time of flight, how long it was in the air for. So we took those four measurements, and I'm going to go through each of them now with you and talk about the assumptions and approximations that we made that might have affected our accuracy. Now let's talk about some of the assumptions that we made when we were taking measurements with our ruler. So let's pretend that this box is the top of the table and this platform here is the top of the pillow. So I took my sensor, I projected it off the edge of the table, it flipped over and it landed like this. And I measured the horizontal range and also the height that it dropped. Now specifically about the height that it dropped, I've got a question for you to ask yourself. What part of the cart dropped that much? And if you think to yourself, well, that question doesn't make sense. The whole cart drops the same amount. Here's a different situation to think about. Let's say that your table wasn't as high as mine, and when you projected your cart off of it, it landed like this. So it starts out horizontal like this, and it ends its projectile motion like this. So how much did the cart drop? And now it does make sense to talk about what part of the cart dropped that much. Were we talking about this corner or this corner? What's the height drop of the cart in this situation? And the answer, of course, is that we actually are trying to measure the height dropped by the center of mass of our sensor. So the center of mass of this little box should be between these two buttons and roughly halfway through the thickness. So halfway across here, halfway across here, embedded in the center of this box. That's the center of mass, and we want to measure how much it dropped. So if you were measuring a cart that did this, it wouldn't be correct to just measure this distance here, because you'd need to subtract off half of this distance here and add half of this distance here to get the total distance that the center of mass of this dropped from here to here. Now, even in my case, the way I measured it, if I just measured this here to here, that's not quite correct, although it's pretty close. So the center of mass of this cart right now is one half of the sensor thickness up, but also the height of those wheels. Then it flipped over and came down here. Now the height of the wheels aren't involved anymore. So the center of mass is only half a thickness of the sensor itself up. So if I measure this distance, then I'm basically missing the height of the wheels. They're only about three millimeters high, and I've got other sources of physical uncertainty. I may never notice a difference that small. But nevertheless, if I just go from the top of the table to the bottom of the sensor on the pillow, I am slightly misjudging the height that I should have measured. And it's even worse when you've got a case 
where the cart falls like this. So how you measured the height probably involved some assumptions. So just rethink them and decide whether you might need to redo the experiment and remeasure the height that the cart dropped. And while we're on the topic, we'd better talk about our range measurement as well and the assumptions that we made with it. So again, the range that we're trying to measure is how far the center of mass traveled between when the projectile motion started and when it ended. So when I measured my horizontal range, I went from the edge of the table over to the end of the sensor. Now, is that appropriate, given that the center of mass is over here? Well, it might be. It depends on where you're assuming the center of mass was when the cart left the table. So for example, if I assume that the center of mass is right at the edge of the table when projectile motion starts, then it wouldn't be appropriate for me to measure from here to here. I'd need to measure from here to the center of mass. However, I think it's more likely the projectile motion starts here when the cart has completely left the edge of the table. So the end of the cart is now lined up with the edge of the table. If I make that assumption, then when this lands, the center of mass is half a sensor length over from the point I measure, but it was also half a sensor length over from the edge of the table. So in that case, measuring from here to here is not a bad approximation because the center of mass is displaced in both locations by the same amount. However, I'm assuming that this is where projectile motion starts. Maybe it's a more appropriate that I assume it starts when this wheel leaves the tabletop rather than when this edge is hovering in space over top of the edge of the table. So if that's the case, if the real point when projectile motion starts is when this wheel leaves the table, then the range I measured from here to here is going to be too short by this amount. So again, think about what your assumptions are about where the center of mass is located when projectile motion begins and where it's located when it ends, and make sure that the range you measured is accurate for the distance traveled horizontally by the center of mass of your sensor. And if you don't think it is, go back, redo the experiment, and remeasure that. So now let's think about the measurements we made on our graphs. Were there any assumptions or approximations that we made here? Well, you'll remember that I highlighted this little plateau area on the accelerometer graph and said, this is my time of flight and my initial velocity is right at the beginning of this. However, I also mentioned that, hey, we've got a little bit of weirdness here at the beginning, and then I basically just ignored it and highlighted the whole area anyway. That was an assumption, right? I assumed that these little bumps and wiggles were something I could safely ignore. Maybe I couldn't. So let's think about what might have caused this. So remember, when the accelerometer goes to zero, the reason why that's supposed to be happening is that the cart is in the air. It's not touching anything. So if it's not touching anything, what's causing all these little accelerations and decelerations here? Well, given that this is happening right at the beginning of the motion, I suspect what is happening is that the tail end of the cart is rubbing on the edge of the table just a little bit as it flies off. And if it is doing that, that would slow down our initial velocity. It also means that the cart's not really in projectile motion yet because it's touching something. In other words, if this little area with the bumps and wiggles is due to the tail end of the cart rubbing against the table, then the projectile motion actually starts after that ends. And if that's the case, if this is my real projectile motion, then this is my real time of flight, and this right here is my real initial velocity. So I've listed three things you can look into when it comes to trying to figure out why your values didn't agree well and whether you can improve the measurement in order to get good agreement. You can check your height measurement, specifically the assumptions you made about where the center of mass was at the beginning and the end of the projectile motion. You can look at your range measurement and again, think about the assumptions you made about where the center of mass was at the beginning and the end of the motion. And you can look at this here on the graph and decide whether you maybe should have chosen a different range of data to describe where projectile motion starts and ends and what the initial velocity was. Check all three of those things, take new measurements if you need to, do new calculations, test out different combinations, see if you can figure out what affected your results, how to take corrected data, and then redo the experiment and hopefully you'll get better agreement. Then you would write up your results in your typed report with the better data. So I would still see your original data in your notebook, and then I'd see new data after it, 
And then in your typed report, you only need to write up the best set of data. And as I said before, this is the process I want you to go through any time you're doing an experiment and you find that your results don't agree with an uncertainty and you expected them to. First, double check that you haven't made any mistakes in your data taking, but assuming you haven't, you should look at your assumptions and approximations and decide whether there's something you didn't take into account or an assumption you made that wasn't valid.